There are many skills in the blacksmith toolbox. One of them is punching and drifting. Generally, you have three methods to punch and drift. Punch and immediately drift. Punch, upset around the punched hole and then drift. And then upset, punch and finally drift. The punched and drifted holes can be used for decorative elements as much as for making tools. But as a smith we can punch square bar, round bar, flat bar, we can punch square across the corners and we can even, with a little effort, make some angled holes across the corners of square bar if you want. Let's take a normal blacksmith's tapered round punch. If we punch a hole in a piece of flat bar, no problem. But if we use that same punch in square bar, we can cut the bar in half. Enter the slot punch. Looking at this example, you can see on the far right, I've started a slot punch. The middle, I've punched all the way through. And then on the far left, I've drifted and replaced the drift with a pin. The question now becomes, how long a slot punch do I use to achieve a certain outcome? In this example, you can see that the slot punch is too large for the intended outcome. And in this example, you can see that the hole is too small to be stretched to any significant size. So with slot and immediately drift, there must be a relationship between the length and width of the slot punch and your final outcome. So that we're on the same page, here's a photograph of my slot punch. I'm going to go back to my original slide of the slot punch and I'm going to cut the bar in half. And then we're going to examine some of the details within the bar. If I take a pair of dividers and offer them up to the start of my original punched hole and then compare that to my finished hole, you notice my finished hole is slightly smaller. For me, that means drifts push, they don't pull too much. The classic way for a blacksmith to punch a hole is to punch until they feel and hear the anvil, turn the bar over, find the bullseye, back punch, clean the slug, and then drift. The issue for me using this method is there must be some migration of material ahead of the punch. And when we drift this bar, it's going to make more of a trapezoidal shape rather than a square shape or parallel sided shape. So if you're making an eye for a tool, for example, and it needs to be spread evenly, you need something that's got parallel sides. Staying with the slot punch, I'm going to change my technique slightly. I'm going to punch from both sides of the bar. Punch from one side to halfway. Stop, turn the bar over, look for the swelling, punch to the middle till you feel the slug go, and then clean the slug and then drift. Punching from two sides of the bar is the basis for getting angled holes in a bar, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's go back to basic punch and drift. For smaller holes, I believe I can be about 1 16th oversized of my intended outcome. For a half inch hole, my slot punch would be about 9 16th wide. Let's take a look at the square bar there in the middle, the one with three holes in it. This gives us a chance to look at how we deal with a centre punch mark and a slot punch. Centre punch mark is quite a big hole, so you could see I'm using the corner of the slot punch, find the centre punch mark, stand the punch up, and then go to work. Let's have a look again. Find it, stand it up, give it a punch, look, make sure you're in the middle, keep punching till you're halfway through the bar. You'll notice I'm quenching the punch every two or three blows. My punch is 41.40, so not the best steel you could use, but adequate. I'm running out of heat here, but I'm going to take the time, turn the bar over, look for the swelling, and just make a little mark or a footprint so when I do come out with the heat, I can go straight to work. So let's take another heat, find the footprint, come back out, hit it three times, quench the tool, hit it a couple more times until that slug releases, and then we're going to go to drifting. I'm going to clear my slug over the Pritchell hole or Hardy hole, whichever makes most sense to me, with, depending on the size of hole, and then we're going to go to drifting. You'll remember from my getting started video that I keep a pair of rivet tongs right by the side of the anvil, and this is the application, setting and picking up that hot drift. Once we've finished our round holes, we're going to shift gears and we're going to make a diamond shaped hole between the two round holes. When I'm looking at the slot punch for the diamond shape hole, I'm going to take a measurement across the corner. So in this case, for a half inch pass through, that's going to be about three quarters of an inch across the diagonals. No different than before, use the corner of the slot punch, find the center punch, stand it up, hit it once, make sure you're in the middle, quench it all if you need to, go back, punch to halfway. 
Turn the bar over, look for the swelling, landmark your punch, punch to halfway, clean the slug. This slug is going to be too large for my Pritchell hole, so I'm going to have to clear it over the Hardy hole. No big deal. So in drifting, I'm going to get a square drift with the end, the working end of the drift reflecting the size and shape of the slot punched hole that I just made. And I've got a bolster plate so that I'm not driving this hole or the material surrounding the hole down the hardy hole as I work. You'll notice I'm working from both sides of the punched hole whenever I'm dealing with the precision bolster. That way I don't get any flashing. And in this case, I've made a top and bottom tool. Just going to protect my punch hole by putting in a mandrel, put a top and bottom tool with these and I'm just going to crisp up the outside of that diamond hole. We've only touched on the basics and punching and drifting but that completes the video for this sequence and I'll look for you again in another video on the skills of a blacksmith.